what we're hoping is that the uh, by understanding the genetic basis of the disease that we begin to understand the fundamental biology understanding the disease so by exploring and understanding which genes might contribute to the development of schizophrenia for example what we are interested in finding is does this tell us anything about the biology and the pathways underlying that and as a result of that we may be able to find a target so we may be able to find a maybe a receptor or some kind of a protein uh, that we would be able to target with some kind of um, pharmacology and then we're hoping that because that has targeted targeted us in on the fundamental basis of the disease and that we've developed some pharmacology against that um, underlying basis of disease that our drugs are more likely to be more effective in um, patients with those diseases. It also may translate, we hope in the future, into be able to targeting specific um, treatments towards specific patient groups, so-called personalized medicine. So helping to understand that actual fact by doing this, we may be able to find um, specific patient groups who are going to respond even particularly well to the, the drugs that we develop. The concept of personalized medicine um, ideally would be the, the right drug in the right dose at the right time for the right patient. So in other words, a patient comes into a doctor and a doctor is able to do some kind of specific screen, is able to identify the components that contribute to that person's disease, be it environmental, be it genetic, or be it another kind of biological parameter. In an ideal world, that would translate into one sort of simple diagnostic that a, a doctor would be able to do on the spot, so-called point-of-care diagnostics. And by doing that, a doctor would be able to say, for you with this disorder, this is the right treatment for you. You're really going to respond to this, this treatment and you're not going to have any side effects. And that's the ideal scenario. Um, that's quite a long way off. What we are doing though is we're making a lot of progress in beginning to understand, particularly in areas like oncology, um, um, on cancer treatments, which are the characteristics, for example, of the tumors that would make them more susceptible to particular treatments. So we're now able to be better at targeting our, uh, many of our treatments in the cancer arena to patients based on the makeup of the tumors which we've identified via genetic or a genomic signature. And we can say, you're more likely to respond to this drug, you're less likely to have side effects and so on. And in an ideal world as we move out into the future, maybe everybody will have their whole genome sequence. So when they come into the doctor, the doctor can read out their genome sequence and be able to sort of say, I can identify that drug for you and be able to prescribe the right drug for them. For the individual at the moment, um, our ability to translate that genetic information at the moment into individual risk prediction for, in other words, to say that you will get a particular disease based on this variant is still very limited at the moment. So the technology is significantly advanced. You can do these, you can provide these genome SNPs. The technology for sequencing is rapidly advancing, I think. There are estimates that now that the cost of sequencing a, uh, a full human genome can be done for somewhere between maybe five and ten thousand dollars or something like that at the moment, that cost is going to come down and come down. But at some stage in the future, we probably will be able to crunch to a large degree the meaning of this information um, and and relate that back to an individual's risk of disease or risk of progression of disease. But we're still quite a bit of a bit of away from that, and that's kind of where the that's where a lot of the debate is with, for example, with the personal genomics companies, which is, yes, you can do this sequencing and provide this information, but how useful is that information at the moment? Because how meaningful is that to the individual? So we've probably got a bit of a way to go with that. The most interesting thing I think um, about the genetics. And this is particularly in the last sort of three or four years, is that the technologies have allowed us to look at um, 
genes potentially contributing to disease or contributing to the risk of the disease in a in what we would call a hypothesis-free way. In other words, we don't know what we're looking for, but we've got the technology and we're looking without any a priori uh, decision about what, a, what it is that might be interesting. And what we're doing as a result of that is we're picking out things we would never have thought of. So we're finding genes that we would never have considered of. Now, we don't necessarily understand that at the moment, but what that's doing and helping us with is it's taking us into new areas of biology. So it's allowing us to, un to explore and understand biology that we would never have thought about before. So I think that that's the one area that I would say this is where genetics kind of changes the paradigm of how we look at biology. Whereas in the past we would have said um, this is our, our favorite candidate for um, based on our knowledge of the biology, which we admit is imperfect, let's look at this gene and see whether this gene is involved. And that's a very labor-intensive, and it's often not been a very successful approach. But the hypothesis-free way of being able to use these massive um, throughput technologies has uncovered lots of interesting biology that we hadn't thought about before. And I think that's one of the, that's one of the big learnings. Mm -hmm.